Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, part two uh, about the methods uh, for assessing the water quality for uh, irrigation. Okay, so regarding the methods, uh, actually the suitability of water for irrigation is being determined in several ways or you can say it's a several methods uh, available to quantify the suitability of water for irrigation okay uh, but i list down some of the the key uh, methods is widely used by uh, uh, by the researchers okay the first one is irrigation water quality indices this indices has been derived uh, based upon the, the the composition of the water or you can say the uh, the parameters are present uh, in the water okay so uh, i will explain in a minute uh, about the uh, uh, what are the different indices has been used so far for the water quality and the second one is the geochemical plots uh, again this also a, a visual uh, observation of the water quality uh, by using some plots okay geochemical means uh, is basically the uh, based upon the chemical parameters of the water the the geochemical plots has been derived so there are some standard plots that has been available uh, only thing we need to uh, plot our data then we can observe the different uh, status of our water okay and the next one is gis uh, geographical uh, information system uh, because this particular tool is widely used nowadays because this is considered as a very powerful tool to interpret the data very easily and it is it has a very good visualization of uh, uh, seeing the data in a, in a, in a different way okay so later i will show you some examples and finally statistics okay hope everyone knows that statistics is not only for uh, this water quality because statistics can be used for uh, data analysis okay because you think about that if there is a huge uh, amount of data there's a large set of data then statistics can be uh, one of the the way you can reduce the data and it will giving some kind of insight uh, to the data for the further uh, interpretation okay okay so start with the uh, irrigation water quality indices okay uh, the first one is electrical conductivity okay so as I mentioned uh, earlier in the first part, uh, electrical conductivity of the water is uh, one of the prime parameter in order to design the suitability of irrigation. Okay. So here I given a word that EC reflects the total ions present in the groundwater. That is the meaning. Electric conductivity means the total ions present in the water and it indirectly suggests the salinity of the water. Very simple. If you have the higher concentration of ions that means that it increases salinity if it is a low concentration it will reduce the salinity because salinity one of the key factors for the irrigation water quality as i mentioned earlier okay this salinity can giving some uh, negative impact uh, to the to the work, to the soil okay mm -hmm. And the next one is the residual sodium carbonates. Okay, and this is the equation uh, in order to identify the RSC, that is a residual sodium carbonate. As you can see, these are the parameters has been used, like a carbonate, bicarbonate, calcium, and magnesium. And uh, this is uh, one of the uh, index that used to determine the bicarbonate azote. Why we bother about the bicarbonate HCO3? because the water having high concentration of bicarbonate there is tendency for calcium and magnesium to precipitate as a carbonate so think about that if there is a more carbonate in the water that means it slowly get precipitate in your soil so that means that the, the quality of the soil get reduced if if there is a precipitate from the from the carbonate so that's why this indices is uh, one of the important uh, indices to indicate the, the soil quality and another one is a Kelly's ratio and this is the equation uh, so the, it's mainly used as sodium calcium and magnesium okay so this Kelly's ratio is used to assess the groundwater quality for the irrigation purpose 
based upon these parameters as I mentioned in the equations and why is so important uh, think about this parameter particularly the, the magnesium okay so the magnesium content in the soil enhance alkalinity to the soil that means that it can reduce the crop yield okay so that is the main reason of why we very concerned about the magnesium okay so this is the benchmark for example if the kelly's ratio value is greater than one after you calculate then it is considered as not suitable for irrigation purpose very straightforward okay another one is the potential salinity okay and this is the equation is mainly uh, chloride and the sulfate has been used for this indices so these indices is used to determine the suitability of groundwater irrigation based upon these two parameters uh, present in your groundwater because as i mentioned to you the chloride is also a consideration of salinity and the sulfate is a kind of a nutrients so another one is a magnesium azot okay and this is the equation like uh, magnesium calcium okay so why this is important because the magnesium azot uh, value after calculated in groundwater uh, reduce the soil to become alkaline so that's resulting in the low crop production okay so yes and the next one is the permeability index one of the key factors and this permeability index is calculated by sodium bicarbonate calcium magnesium okay so it's used to determine the water movement capacity usually it will indicate the permeability uh, so think about that if you have the soil uh, because the soil is composed of uh, uh, grains of sediments if there is no space between the sediments the water cannot move from one place to another place then the root of the plant cannot take out the water from the soil so it basically the movement of the water in the soil so that means that if there is no good permeability uh, this will affect the, uh, the soil quality ultimately it will affect the crops okay sodium percentage uh, this equation uh, basically sodium potassium calcium and magnesium and the sodium percentage we can also call as a sodium azot uh, it it helps the groundwater uh, suitability to identify the groundwater suitability by irrigation so higher concentration of sodium creates chemical bonding with soil and reduce the water movement capacity is same like your permeability index okay and the sodium absorption ratio uh, this is the equation we call a SAR and the sodium absorption process causes the undesirable effects changing the soil property and reducing the soil permeability so if you see all the indices is is indirectly affect the the soil because you know the soil is a direct contact to the crop okay so whatever the soil property it will affect your crop Okay. So, the water percolate into the soil, either it reduces the soil quality in terms of permeability or in terms of your, uh, the, the salinity present in the water. Okay, so these are the, uh, the various type of indices, but there are many more, but I just want to uh, give some uh, key indices that widely used and this is the overall summary of the indices. Okay, uh, it should look uh, very complex but uh, if you see uh, this output has been taken from this program we call as a watt class okay so the watt class is a program is run through the c plus plus or visual basic because very recently it was upgraded into visual basic so this give you this outcomes okay as you can see what are the indices you, you we discussed before like a sodium percentage uh, sodium absorption ratio and rsc and so on okay and you can see all the limits for example here sodium absorption ratio excellent this is the range 0 to 10 good is 10 to 18 and the fair is 18 to 26 and the poor means greater than 26 so after you plotting the data you can see that 49 percentage of sample fall under excellent 
and only few sample in the poor condition that means the overall the water is good for irrigation okay same like the sodium percentage you can see here excellent good permissible and doubtful and unsuitable you can see the distribution of the sample numbers okay so based upon that you can design uh, what is the status of the water uh, could be used for the irrigation okay and so many so many okay and the next uh, item is a geochemical plots as i mentioned to you again the use is use some parameters and the first one uh, in the left side you can see this plot we call as a donin's plot okay and uh, this is mostly uh, uh, used to further identify the permeability of the soil okay you can see this axis is the permeability index that calculated from the indices and this is the total concentration of ions present in the water and you can see the three different zones class 1 class 2 class 3 uh, basically if the class 1 is have the uh, good quality and the class 3 is the is a poor quality so now you can see the sample this is just an example just to give you some glance okay you can see that uh, most of the samples fall under class 2 and class 3 so that means that it ranging from moderate to poor uh, quality okay and this is the upgraded uh, donin's plot okay the same parameter like permeability index and the total concept in this one is for the sodium absorption ratio and you can see that these are three domains uh, class one class two class three then you can see the distribution of the sample from that you can identify uh, the status of the different water okay and this one is the ussl diagram and this diagram uh, is made between the, uh, the electrical conductivity over here and here you have the sodium absorption ratio okay and you can see c uh, belongs to salinity and the s belongs to sodium percentage okay so for example if c1 s1 means low salinity and low sodium the water is in good condition if something the c4 s4 is a very high sodium and high calcium uh, sorry salinity that giving uh, poor quality of water okay uh, this is just an example but maybe uh, there are some other few plots are available okay gis geographic information system as i mentioned that uh, this will give a lot of a spatial distribution of the data okay uh, whatever the indices you calculated you can you can uh, put it in the gis so that you can know the spatial distribution of the uh, your data okay uh, this all the four diagram is the spatial diagram for the electrical conductivity and you can see the different ranges of values okay for example you can see that the blue is the low ec and the green one is the higher ec so from the graph from the plot you can easily identify which area you find the higher ec and which area you can find the low ec so from that you can identify the spots we can we can call as a vulnerable zones okay so you can easily identify the vulnerable zones for the irrigation water quality okay just an example so similar like you can use all the parameters into the gis to identify the spatial distribution of the parameters and finally statistics okay uh, there are so many uh, methods in the statistics but when you look on the literatures uh, for the groundwater studies mostly correlation analysis and the factor analysis has been uh, used widely okay correlation is simply the correlate between the ions okay and uh, the first table is the correlation you can see that uh, correlation between ions okay the red uh, the color number indicate the significant correlation between the ions for example the 0 0.98 is the value that indicate the good correlation between chloride and sodium same like the this one uh, 0 0.67 good correlation between calcium and magnesium because you may wonder how to decide this number because usually the number is 0 to 1 okay so if uh, above 0 0.5 we can indicate the good correlation if it is less than 0 0.5 we can call this a poor correlation okay and uh, the second table is the factor analysis this is one of the important uh, uh, analysis that that give you the 
the process how the quality has been controlled okay you can see that each column they given the four factors okay factor one factor two factor three and four and these are the parameters so each factors controlled by a process for example the first factor is controlled by ion exchange process the second factor controlled by seawater intrusion salinity and the third factor you can see that they easily identify these parameters come from the fertilizers you can see that sulfate phosphate silicate this all from the fertilizers okay and the last column is a recharge mechanism okay so see how beauty it is because if you're using the factor analysis you can easily identify the what are the different process uh, particular geochemical process that control the water quality okay okay so what are the learning outcomes uh, from this uh, section and i can give you that irrigation water quality is assessed by water quality indices geochemical plots gis and statistics okay so these are the widely used methods to to understand to assess the water quality for irrigation okay uh, we come to the end for part 2 and i will see you in part 3 thank you